Good afternoon, Sava here from Football Heritage TV. How are you all? Hope everyone is well. So with all the rumours circulating about Harry Kane and Ben Zimmer possibly heading off to the Middle East, Kane could be going. What would that mean for Spurs? It's all hypothetical. So today we're going to talk about who his possible replacement could be and we're going to talk about Richarlison. Now, we're going to look at it twofold. One, should Richarlison stay at Tottenham if Harry Kane stays? Is there a future for a £60 million striker that's not going to get on the pitch as a centre forward? Is he good enough to play in one of those wide areas? Because from what we've seen this year, the answer's probably a resounding no. He's only got one goal. Yes, he's got to sell in, settled into a very difficult Tottenham team, a very difficult club at the moment with no strategy, no direction, three different managers. But cream rises to the top. And unfortunately, this bloke got the big billing. He got all the big billing, didn't he? All the big billing. Brazil's number nine. People were telling me, you wait and see. I can think of a fair few YouTubers telling me, you wait and see. He's brilliant. Think of him in a better team than Everton. Brazil's number nine. He'll score goals. And he's looked useless. Now, has he looked useless because he's played wrong? Has he looked useless because he's useless? Are we seeing that this is a guy that was good for a team like Everton that were battling relegation? But when you step up the next notch, and as bad as Spurs have been, we're the next notch up from Everton, definitely. Are we seeing that he can't cope with that? He can't handle that. So let's break it down. If Kane stays, how do we get this guy into the team? How do we get this guy scoring goals if Kane stays? Do they play in a two? And obviously, this is all down to a new manager, a new director of football, and the philosophy that they implement. But how do you get them both in the team? Is Kane prepared? Sorry, is Richarlison prepared to just be a substitute? Is he prepared to be a bit part player that plays in cups and coming off the bench? Would it work as a two? Could he link up him and Kane? Kane dropping deep, feeding Richarlison. Do we see him on the long term on the right side or the left side? For me, I don't see that he's got I don't see that he's got the skill, I don't see that he's got the ability, the, the technique to play out there. I don't see that he's got that. So what to do? Now, before we look at who would buy him or how much we'd sell him for, what about if Harry Kane goes? Now, this is really awkward, right? Because we all know that he is nowhere as near good as Harry Kane. But the questions will remain, can he score goals if he plays 38 games a season? If Spurs buy a playmaker and they're just feeding him in and his game isn't running the channels, but his game is being in the box where Kane would be, would he score goals? Who would that playmaker be? And the reason I say that is because Kane is our creative force at the moment. Take him out. I don't know where the assists and stuff are coming from. So could Richarlison do well with, say, a... a Number 10, playing behind him. Do you trust him to be the Spurs number nine? Is he good enough to be the Spurs number nine? Now, we say he is at Brazil, but at Brazil, he's playing with the likes of Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, Paqueta, Neymar, Casemiro. He's not got that at Tottenham. So is he good enough to be the Tottenham Hotspur number nine long term? If he is, how many goals do you see him scoring? What's a successful season from a goal output? His best ever in the Premier League is 13 league goals. For me, that's really poor. And we paid 60 million for him. But could he do better if he played more games through the middle? I'm not so sure. I'm not his biggest fan. For me, more than anything, I don't think he's got the ability that some think he has. The shithousery for me, people love that. I don't care about that. I care about your ability as a footballer and your output. And more than any of that, I feel that his attitude stinks. When you see him, he just looks aggy. 
It looks like everything is painful. Everything is why me? It's all against me. I'm hard done by. And that's not my type of footballer, if I'm completely honest. Only my opinion. Equally, if we're going to sell this guy, who buys him? Who buys him? Back to Everton? Would that be a good move for him? How much for? Because you're not getting 60 million from him, are you? Would it do him well to go back to an Everton? Play week in, week out? Be loved by the fans? Get your 13, 14 goals in a season? Be the main man? As opposed to sitting on the bench at Tottenham? Or struggling at Tottenham? Then if Richarlison's our main number nine, who do we buy as a sub striker? There's so much going to go on this summer. And that area at the top all depends on Harry Kane. But Richarlison, for me, you're not getting the 60 million back. Will Daniel Levy, after one year, accept 35, 40 million? Will he write off 20 million pounds? Do we loan him out? Does anyone, does anyone take him on loan? Does he go to the Middle East and play? People linking him with Real Madrid. Can't see why, if I'm brutally honest. If he goes there, that will be the weirdest signing of all time. But I'm keen to hear your thoughts on, on Richarlison, because this is a player that whenever we talk about him live on streams, some people absolutely berate him. Some people are, are, are sympathetic and empathetic towards him. Some people think it's hard to judge after one year. But this is a Premier League player who's been in the Premier League for four or five years, coming to another Premier League team. So should he get that leeway? So there's a lot of questions that go with Richarlison. Keen to know your thoughts, but can Richarlison shine at Spurs? Can we see that this is the case of second season syndrome, where a player has a bad first year and then has a good second year? Because so far, one Premier League goal, which was a couple of weeks ago against Liverpool, and two Champions League goals that were both in one game means that from all of his appearances this year, he's managed to score in two of them, which quite frankly is horrific. Let me know your thoughts. Can he shine at Spurs? Would Daniel Levy sell for less than 60 million? Should he go to Real Madrid? Is he more aligned to an Everton? Did we make a massive mistake in buying him? Let me know your thoughts. Please like, please subscribe. We're heading towards 6K and I'll be live at 4 p.m for the daily transfer show. Thank you.